Thank you for taking time to 30 watch years and of Watchtower presentation. Post Chapter your comments two, entitled "Like and Share this Early video. Machinations." Subscribe to my channel. The first subheading is "Trouble Ahead." Chapter. After the death of Charles Taze Russell in 1915, there was a time period where the leadership was uncertain. C.T. Russell had his will in place and stated that he wanted it to transfer to a group of men instead of a single leader. But eventually, against the great Charles Taze Russell's wishes, a man emerged as, a, as the sole leader and president of the Watchtower organization. And this man was none other than Joseph Franklin Rutherford. And he wanted the glory days. He wanted C.T. Russell's position. He got it. And he wanted to build off of his success. And he and several others were imprisoned over a year. And upon his release and until his deathbed, his wrath for the clergy knew no bounds. He blamed Christendom for his imprisonment and until he until the day he died he went on a hate filled spree that was just ridiculous so upon this premise is what he aimed to build the second tier of the watchtower organization although he was the third president so the watchtower leadership they sensed that within the churches that there were millions of professing Christians who were not well versed or well grounded in the scriptures and that they could be easily pried away from their churches. And so in this way there came to be a plan and a persistent attack against organized religion, particularly that of Christendom. All other religions all other Christian religions outside of the Jehovah's Witness religion. They smeared religion as being the cause of all evil and in fact it was organized religion that was the cause of all this. As a matter of fact you can probably remember seeing some pictures or hearing stories of Jehovah's Witnesses back in the 20s and 30s picketing and wearing sandwich boards that said religion is a snare and a racket. This was under the guise of the judge. The second subheading is entitled brainwashing. This brainwashing began with a pamphlet called The Fall of Babylon the Great published in 1919. And this pamphlet boldly proclaimed that Christendom was Babylon the Great mentioned in the book of Revelation. So the first phase of this watchtower brainwashing was to destroy old concepts and ideas connected to these. That sounds a little familiar because nowadays the Jehovah's Witnesses have a book called Reasoning on the Scriptures which basically does the same thing. It destroys all of Christendom's beliefs that have been taught for 2,000 years. But when you tear something down, you can't leave it. You have to put something in its place. That's the true secret to brainwashing. Tear it down, put something completely new in its place. So what was this replacement? Well, this came from a Christian doctrine based on John chapter 11, verse 26, that those who believe in Jesus shall never die. So you may know where this is heading. They presented this as a new watchtower doctrine with the catchphrase, millions now living shall never die, and then expounded on that pamphlet in 1920 in the book Millions Now Living Will Never Die. 
And so looking at the backdrop of this, considering the aftermath of World War I, millions of people dying on the battlefield, suffering food shortages and so forth, this was an electrifying message. And they made it appear that the times they were living in, that this fact could finally be realized. It was this generation that would be able to never die. And in order to enjoy that and live forever, they had to leave their church and join the Watchtower organization. So while Jesus said that in John eleven twenty five that he is the resurrection and the life. He that believes in him, although he will die, he shall live, and whoever liveth and believeth in him shall never die. The Watchtower twists this teaching to the effect of saying, he that lives and believes in the Watchtower organization joins us, carries our books, booklets, magazines, reports his time, and attends our meetings exclusively shall never die. And thus the brainwashing began. They began setting up the organization's view as scriptural doctrine and continued by gradually instilling intolerance and narrow-mindedness in its followers. So this book will help you to see how cleverly and persistently this goal was pursued until theocratic thinking, blind loyalty, and non-thinking was demanded from every follower. So at this time, the author was living in Berlin, Germany, and he was ignorant. Those in Germany were ignorant to the purpose of these two pamphlets, The Fall of Babylon the Great and Millions Now Living Shall Never Die. The, I guess you could say ignorance is bliss. But those in that area of Germany, they blindly placed millions of copies of both. And therefore, the fervor of the millions campaign began. The third subheading is entitled, With Fiend Words Making Merchandise. And this is taken from the scripture of uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 3, which says, Through covetousness shall they with fiend words make merchandise of you. Time and again you'll notice that the Watchtower cherry picks scriptures. They quote scriptures tear them out of their setting and their context, misapply them to their own needs and purposes. But why did they do this? Well, in those days they had a purpose and that was selling books. They needed contributions, they needed money to help build their worldwide society. So from the beginning, even in the days of Charles Taze Russell, this was used to get people to buy and read Watchtower published books and booklets and pamphlets and tracts and so on and so forth. Uh, these writings always contained a kernel of truth, particularly at the beginning as bait. You'll notice in today's Watchtower lessons that are studied on Sundays in Kingdom Halls around the world, it starts off with the scripture and everything is based off of that. But the unwary victim, before he realizes it, he surrenders all individualism, abandons all personal thinking, and gives up all private initiative. He becomes one of millions of Watchtower drones. So this new second tier of the Watchtower was trying to put themselves in a position where their followers would only read the society's books, the society's booklets, the society's magazines. And after he acquired a taste of, quote-unquote, the truth, 
then the brainwashing not only led him to believe in the Watchtower literature, but led him to believe in a new kingdom position called Publisher. Now this publisher was compelled to peddle this, this literature from door to door and sell it as the truth. So the author mentions a striking example of how the society pounced on the scriptures and how they did this to serve their own purpose. Again, remember the backdrop of this time period coming off of World War I. What better passage of scriptures to use than the ones in Matthew chapter 24? This passage that they explain referred definitely and specifically to the time at hand. In that time, it was considered the time of the end, the conclusion of the system of things. There would be wars and reports of wars, nation rising against nation, king, kingdom after kingdom, kingdom against kingdom. But really, hadn't that happened before 1914? Weren't there wars and reports of wars, earthquakes, food shortages? Certainly there was. But they put impetus and focused on chapter 24, verse 14 of Matthew. That this good news of the kingdom would be preached throughout all the entire inhabited earth for a witness to all the nations. And then the end would come. So now was a special time in the history of mankind that this preaching message must be accomplished so with that in mind they began their advertising campaign so appropriately the next subheading is advertise 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 the king and the kingdom so somewhere between 1919 and 1922 after the imprisonment of the society's leaders and their president and their release they began to get organized and to try and build their empire and sell books and booklets and things published by the Watchtower Society and to raise enough money to build their new world society and it started in Cedar Point Ohio in September of 1922 with that convention but how would they go about their advertising. They couldn't advertise the Watchtower Society. It was coming off a of failed prophecy in 1914. They couldn't advertise their books, the Watchtower, or anything of that of that sort. So they decided to advertise their campaign based on the old age Christian hope of God's kingdom, and to give additional weight by using Matthew 28:19 and 20. To go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing people in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things I have commanded them, and look, I am with you until the days to the end of the world. So this gave their campaign impetus and focus that they were living in a special time of the end. And so they came up with the idea to name the convention, advertise the king and his kingdom. And so this was an electrifying contrast to the lukewarm Christians of the time who did not engage in disciple making as the Bible students did. And so that set them apart. That certainly did. So from that time on, Watchtower leaders continued to use historical background of scripture to establish the legality of their campaign and its correctness and this hasn't stopped they continue to do that such as using Exodus chapter 11 verse 2 and 3 we're speaking of the time of Moses it says speak now in the ears of the people and let them ask every man of his neighbor and every woman of her neighbor jewels of silver and jewels of gold 
and Jehovah gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. The watchtower used that into guilting their members into contributions, and they continue to do that. Jehovah's Witnesses are guilted into making contributions at assemblies and conventions because there's always a deficit. They're guilted into making contributions at their local kingdom halls because they don't have enough funds to pay for their bills and so on and so forth. So we see from the beginning of Judge Rutherford's tenure of using and twisting scriptures to their benefit. This is going to conclude chapter 2 and stay tuned for the next. Thank you for taking time to watch and listen to this presentation. Post your comments, like and share this video, subscribe to my channel, and stay tuned for the next chapter.